Hey there guys and welcome back. So we are on session 19. As you can see here, that was both of these are today at time of recording, both hours. I obviously did not have a session last night because I got involved in other things. But regardless, we did manage to get at least two sessions during this weekend, which is better than we've been doing for the past couple weeks. So uh, also, I will note that obviously, yes, I did go seven minutes over and that's because I wanted everything wrapped up nice and neatly. Now, I think the best way to start this one off is to just hop into the demo. We haven't been there in a while and see where we're at because that extra seven minutes allowed me to make sure that we were had everything wrapped up and we could actually show you something. So here we are over at the demo. Again, all this is going to look exactly, well, not exactly, because we didn't have this exclamation point right here before. That exclamation point, again, is the unexplored port. That's the new symbol we added to the map. So we can start working on combat. So here we go. We move one. Again, reactor power still works as we expect it. And we move two. And bam, we get a combat window. And as you can see, my HP is going down here. And game over, you were slain. So... Yeah, you were insane in combat. So we have officially died, and that is all a success. Now, as previously stated, and I don't want to hit OK just yet because that will actually quit the de demo and clear everything out, but uh, as previously stated, I don't think the weapons and items should show for the brigand, so I should probably should adjust that. However, for everything else, everything else is looking right. We now have our items in here. We did not have those in there at the end of last session. And we do obviously have our battle axe here. Now, the reason I didn't bother clicking any buttons is because these buttons are not hooked up just yet, but we're getting there, okay? I made sure everything else was put together. So, click that. Oh, that's right. For some reason, I thought that actually cleared out the combat window. It did not. Regardless, I'm gonna click that button. And just to demonstrate something, uh, let me actually, uh, we'll quit demo and restart just so that I am reset let me pull up the yeah okay i'm gonna clear there we go the console and then i'm gonna go ahead and show it to you guys because i was making sure that the key bindings was the other thing were not actually working and that was part of this update so just have a second while i add this to the screen because it did not occur to me to show you until just now all right, so there is the console. Full we'll size it for you, put it over on the right hand side here. Now, as I move, you'll see that the uh, console pops up with moving. Okay, let me, uh, I gotta rearrange the windows it looks like. Okay, so you can see that it's popping up with moving as I'm moving around. Oh, that's funny. So that when I minimize the window, you actually, there we go. Or not minimized, but change the size of it. So anyway, here we are. And all I was going to demonstrate right here is that when I start combat, I can start spamming the move buttons. And you'll see that over here on the right hand side, we're no longer registering the key presses. That was the other major thing that got added here, a isolation of key binding events. So with all that out of the way, let's send you over to VS Code and I will pull GitHub back up on my monitor and we will be going through all the code changes. So, uh, GitHub, do not disappear on me like that. There we go. Uh, my monitors have been doing that weird thing recently. And I, by that weird thing, I mean, uh, I go to maximize it on another screen and it somehow ends up between my screens, like not visible at all. And then I got to like hit the left arrow, the window key left arrow to get it back. Very odd. Regardless, not something you necessarily needed to know, but let's start looking at changes. Uh, first change I want to go through, I guess we'll look at, uh, CSS, CSS, one of those things I spent maybe half an hour in the first hour, half an hour in the second hour doing CSS. So here in combat.css, uh, I changed this up a bit. So it looks like, do, 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 do. Looks like I made a change here. Now, the interesting thing is, is that I don't recognize the previous change that I had in there. So 
so kind of whatever but oh that's right we did that during the uh i think we did that during the recap that's right i think i made this change during the recap that's why i don't remember it from today regardless uh here we have the combat object window uh, it's absolutely positioned, so it's over top, inline flex, so that if we rearrange the window, the space bandit in our example will wrap to the bottom below the other character. Now, that may be a bad idea, frankly speaking, uh, just because the animations between the characters then get a little funky, but uh, we will see where that goes. Whoops, I did not mean to click that. Hopefully that does not pop up. Regardless... Uh, flex wrap obviously to go with all this stuff all the floating and stuff ah cancel border style and background easy enough to understand yeah that stuff was all pretty easy to set up because one of those things i just go ahead fire up the inspect tool and then just start tweaking the uh, settings and plus they're pretty straightforward settings these aren't too out of the ordinary and then each of the combat characters obviously have a width of 50 because they take up half the combat box and a minimum width I put in there so that they, you know, did not get too small and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that is pretty simple. That was the, again, playing with the CSS and whatnot. It may not have been a full half hour in the first uh, hour of the session, it may have been more like 20 minutes, but did take a, more time than I would have liked. However, we then move on to site. And this is where things took me definitely in half an hour in the second hour. So the pop-ups, I decided to make this a uh, generic thing rather than specific for combat. And this is how I've got it set up right now, right? So it's positioned left and right and the pop-up really should it's one of these um where is it yeah see this display initial uh, i don't have any position or displays on these things i probably should and that's something i was thinking about and just never got around to i have it over on combat but if i'm going to generic everything then it maybe makes more sense for example the inventory the inventory is what i'm really thinking of here the inventory is another pop-up that we're going to have. It may make sense to just put this in pop-up instead. And that way, both the combat and the inventory, we don't have to worry about that. And then we can use, again, left, right, and the margins, etc. This height of 50 VH, I added this in there just because it made it look better in our current demo. I'm not sure if that's quite correct. And basically, that I had to put that in here for this stuff, for these animations. Uh, animations I'm not terribly familiar with, frankly speaking, but they were necessary, I felt, in order to get a good display on the window. Uh, what basically I seem to feel like uh, a dark room just kind of tossed the div at you when you went into combat, just threw it up on the screen, and all of a sudden you had this like panic moment of, oh crap, I'm in combat. That's the impression I had from a dark room, which is why I wanted to really ease in, you know, give it a full second to come onto the screen that way you can see the pop-up coming up and you're actually preparing yourself mentally that was the idea here so i added in these animations and this is how i've got it set up here again i don't this is not something that i necessarily normally do so i'm not sure if the, any of this is 100 percent you know efficient or how other people would do it but it at least works so walking through this obviously opening the window we're starting from none and I had to overwrite important here to make sure that it actually was not displayed and then width and height obviously we're starting from little zero and then going to big full-sized so we got that set we turned the flex wrap off because it before I did that uh, the div was resizing as it was getting bigger like it was bouncing back and forth between a square and a rectangle okay and similarly, overflow hidden because the contents were spilling out the second I turned no wrap on. So, for example, the bandit would be underneath the div, underneath the pop-up, which was ugly and obviously should not happen. Uh, the next thing that is kind of important is uh, I had to put this left and right here in pop-up. And it makes sense in pop-up. Honestly, it does make sense in here. 
but I originally had this whole entire block in combat. But it makes sense that I have a reference to it here. Again, um, I don't believe, if I recall correctly, CSS does not have variables yet. I mean, it may never have variables, frankly, because of the design philosophy. And so, short of using, like, SAS or anything like that, uh, I would prefer to have these a variable that I could just dis declare in one point and then have the precompiler, you know, put in here. But we're not doing that for this project. So, uh, SAS less, whatever. So, because it's not, I have to just keep an eye on from the, here on if I change the size here of the left and right. And I don't know why I have right here. That's actually... That is really funny. How did that get there? Yeah, that doesn't make any sense, does it? That's funny. I never actually looked at it. I guess I somehow typed it in there and then was not paying attention. Okay. <laughs> Live Blender on screen. Nice. Regardless, uh, I need to calculate the minus 20 here. Uh, let me see. Actually, you know what? No, that does make sense, it is, doesn't it? It's one of these things. Uh, CSS, again, I am bad at CSS. So I guess that is right. Anyway, my point being is that I threw this in here. It looks like it's working correctly. So uh, basically, we need to get up to the two size. Needs to get up to whatever this is going to end up being. So that's why I put the calc 100% minus 20 PX in here. It looks right. Before I did this, it was uh, jumping. So if I put 100% in here, the box would go up to 100% of the screen and then shrink back down to fit inside here. And if I tried to do like any, I mean, I tried to do a couple different things, but this seems to at least get as close enough. And if it is not technically correct, it's getting me close enough that you do not notice the pop-up box jittering when it opens and similarly this height 50 vh is uh for the same exact reason because otherwise the box was changing shape after the animation was over and we didn't want that so that is where we're at and obviously everything else should be self-explanatory with the flex wrap and overflow so that is that and that is all the css Again, maybe 50 minutes of our two-hour session today. Two hours, seven minutes, technically speaking. And now on to the other updates. Let's see. CSS, CSS. All right. So map demo, JSON. Uh, Events.json we did on stream the other day. Okay. Um, I will touch on this one first because this is an easy one to get out of the way. This came later on in the session. This was a much later addition. However, it is self-explanatory, so it is easier to just get it done with right now. I added, do, 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 up here in character, adjust HP. So you will recall if we go over to colony that add resources, add resources was a function I added because we kept on having to uh, handle it in the same way and etc 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 so similarly actually i could have swore i guess i am wrong about this but i guess uh unlock is a better example so unlock always triggers the unlock event that's the reason why i added the adjust hp because previously and it closed because i did not keep it open previously we had set up or we had created these events right previously uh, but we never triggered them for anything and now because we're finally displaying it on screen now we do need to trigger them and we kind of want to trigger that whenever the hp changes no matter what so that is the rationale for making the adjust hp so the adjust hp obviously as you can see here if there is no change if there is no value then we just return otherwise we get the new hp we make sure that's between zero and max HP. And then we go ahead and trigger the event 
character is this, and current HP is current HP. Very straightforward. Here, I'll add some more notes here live on stream. Notice that HP has changed. Value number, HP change. Uh, that's funny, I don't, oh, yes I do have a return right here. We will delete that because that's not real. And if H, uh, let's see, caps uh, applies and caps and HP change between zero and max HP and notifies listeners. There we go. Properly documented now. So that again is very, very simple to explain, which is why we got out of the way now. Moving on uh, to go with that actually would be the one changing combat we did, which would be do, 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 down here. Action opponent adjust HP. So we called it over here. Technically speaking, we'll also have to call that in item uh, callbacks and whatnot. Uh, we will burn that bridge when we get there, frankly. So, uh, I guess, I mean, just as a preview, items.j, uh, not items.js, where do we keep that? I don't think it's items.js. Where were we keeping the callbacks for items? Do, 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 do. Oh, callbacks.js. That makes sense. Callbacks. So, in here, right here. So we could go ahead and update the heal one to, I guess this isn't even a preview because it's simple enough to change, right? So, Kara.adjustHP and the value is value. There we go. And that will automatically call the event listener for us. Uh, actually, I take that back. Target. What did we have before? Why did I have Kara in there before? Hmm. Kara equal activator. Target equals. Yeah, okay. I think that was a mistake. That looks like a mistake to me. So, yeah, it should be target dot just HP have target adjust its HP and again kind of like uh, just its HP uh, kind of like over here in colony and I know that we were just over here looking at the ad resources but over here in ad resources we had a bunch of checks we had to do before we added the thing so that's the other reason that uh, the other nice thing about having the adjust HP over here is we don't have to keep on uh, typing in HP equals min zero max or min max HP and max zero HP, which was right here. So this line in theory, whenever we change HP, we'd have to include, but by using the adjust HP, obviously that is, uh, that is encompassed by it. So that saves us a little bit of time. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I had a variety of typos that I had to fix. I'm not going to go through all of them. Uh, most of them were in scripts.io or scripts slash io because this isn't Python. Uh, right over here. So I had various typos, like for example, uh, combatant.weapon instead of weapons with an S. It, or it might have been items and items or whatever. Regardless, various little typos like that that I came across once I started actually running the demo. Not really worth mentioning. Two second fixes. No big deal. Uh, let us see. Okay. I believe all these event changes were in this session and I did not do any of them with you. So. Uh, was this? Yeah. Okay. So uh, I changed this initiation. Because if you look over at map demo 
and we will scroll down really quick to the port fight. We built the event and then we wanted the event to initialize and we were passing in game here to build the event. So I would, in theory, the way I had it written before, also to pass in game here. But that's kind of silly because the event already has access to the game. So for that reason, I went ahead and toss this in here. So if game is in options, we can just go ahead and use game. And again, this return right here is just an error. So regardless, we move on. This was the same as it was. And let's see. Ah, right. Um, I did not have get combat character. Again, before we go into combat, we got to get combat character from the player because the player's character is different from its combat character. The opponents, however, the enemies should all be, com be uh, should all be combat characters. We should never have to worry about the opponents not being combat characters. Although we could check for that. That is definitely something we could check for. It looks like I also adjusted these ones. So before uh, this constructor just said type reward options. Well, the type for the combat is always going to be combat. The type for choice, which is where's choice at? Choice is always going to be choice. So I just went ahead and hard coded those in because that makes sense. Do 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 do. Let's see what else do we got in events. Uh, looks like I had to do a type check in the build encounter just to make sure options were defined. Do, 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 do. I rearranged the rest of this, it looks like. Uh, somewhere. Where did I rearrange the rest of this? Okay, so this part I did on stream, as I recall. So that's not it. I... Looks like I added this line, which is a very simple, straightforward line and probably should have just been added last time. And let us see. Where is... Oh, you know what it was? I was trying to figure out what the it's saying the line change was. I think it was... Right here? Okay, yeah. So originally, originally this said, if not enemy, return. I wanted to try to get the enemy first, and then return if we do not have an enemy. That was the change I did. So, that's a pretty straightforward change, obviously. Because we don't want to return prematurely. We want to see whether or not we can get the enemy first. And then, uh, return otherwise. And as you can see, we still have the two in, do in here, because we would, above this part right here try to get the enemy if enemy is undefined to begin with so that is that and that is the end of events so i think let me just click around really quick i believe that does just bring us on to uh map demo which should have a lot of the changes yeah good bit of changes in the map demo so this is our last stop for today Starting from the top, uh, back to the pop-ups. So obviously this says pop-up hidden now instead of all the style information because that got moved. I changed this from combat box to actually just the combat. I plan on doing the same with inventory because inventory can just be defined in either site.css or map.css, let's say, because again, the inventory pop-up should pop up, I believe, only on the Overland map. I believe that's the only place we're going to pop out the inventory. So that will get adjusted next time, but not right now, because we do not have that prepared. Do, 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 do. Okay, I adjusted the game over messages. So here we have this message, and then we call game over with the message. Before, I was just calling, I was just doing the alert right here and then calling finish demo afterwards. So we slid that down a slot. And on that note, I think we'll just run down to game over really quick to look at that. So game over again, this was up there, this exact code, but because we'll be reusing this over and over again, I just made its own function. Uh, you may notice that I am skipping a bunch of notations 
Obviously, my notations are generally a lot more dense, but I was in a bit of a rush today to get these sessions done because I wanted to get as far as possible and have a serviceable demo. So the, I will go back and fill in notations as I realize documentation as I realize that we do not have it. So, 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 so. Uh, up here in this, this is now class character instead of style 50%. Again, similarly, because we have the CSS now, now we can use character class instead. And do, 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 do. yeah, so all these slots, both in the weapons and the loadout, I had forgot to zero index. Now, technically speaking, it doesn't necessarily matter that they're zero index. It just makes my life easier to be zero index. They could have been one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. But it makes my life easier to zero index them, so I changed them over to zero index. So slot zero, one, two, three, four, etc. Do 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 do. Uh, weapon. Okay, again, <laughs> minor typo change. I was forgetting let's for some reason last session. I don't know why I was forgetting to declare my variables. That's a pretty silly newbie mistake there and let's see okay then we went ahead and filled in the weapon so this was a skeleton uh form last time now we're actually getting the weapon string filling in the weapon name and the title again we as i said in the demo when i was showing you guys the demo we do not actually have these buttons hooked up to anything just yet but now at the very least they have names and they have hover text and this whole entire block right here again is basically the same exact thing as this here i'm considering consolidating them but it's such a small amount of code that it's probably not worth it it's probably fine to just keep them separately otherwise they work exactly the same way so that is that and do 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 the quit button, which is down here, right there. Quit button, I did position sticky, bottom five. That way, no matter what, it is visible at the bottom of the screen, in theory, assuming the CSS works out the way I think it does. Previously, it was just there. So that was adjust on the CSS. Uh, handle key presses is the one that I showed you at the very end there. So now we check to see if either the pop-ups are open and if we do, we use the pop-ups uh, dispatcher to handle the key presses. Otherwise, again, here's our console moving that I was showing you guys. Then we can move around the map like this. So if the dispatcher handles it, obviously we just return from there. So we do we never get down here. We never actually move our character on the map if we have a pop-up screen in the way. So there's that change. Obviously, these are empty right now they'll eventually get populated and down to load combat so uh we had the let me see if where's my red text function port event so it's funny because the okay so it looks like a port event if i'm reading the diff correctly here it looks like I actually just had port event as empty. So actually all of this, 100% of this is new. So let's go over it. Uh, we actually don't want to start here. I take it back. We don't want to start at load. We want to start at port event. So port event, when we enter the port, the unexploded port, it creates the, uh, it builds the encounter. Let me just look at that really quick. Is that really 185, 270, 275? Yeah, okay, it's looking like that is all new. The funny thing is, is that I thought I had that last time, which is why I keep on double-checking myself, but I guess not. So, we build the encounter. Obviously, pass a game. Our enemy is zero. That's the bandit. And then these are the rewards right here. We're getting ID2 resources, which I believe is scrap. I think I'm giving us 10 scrap for this encounter. Uh, we can double-check that. Let's see, items.json, resources, 0, 1, 2. Uh, that's right, we got to go over to English to actually figure out what that is. 
Resources, zero, one, two. Yes, scrap. We are giving ourselves scrap for that. We're beating the brand over to demo, back to demo. So anyway, building counter. We went over building counter last time. Combat is initialize the combat. Uh, it's one of these interesting things where I don't know how necessary this really is, frankly. So over here in uh, events, events.js, we have the combat encounter. At this point, we, I mean, the only thing it really does for us is not provide, yeah, okay, never mind. I think that is worth it. I take it back. In the demo, it doesn't feel worth it, but I guess it does make sense in this scenario because we can pre-populate events at the beginning of the game if we want to before we actually have the game. Ah, uh, no, actually, we do need the game initialized. So, yeah, maybe it doesn't make as much sense. Maybe we should have game... Yeah, this all could be executed up here because the combat doesn't actually start running. Ah, no, I take that back. Yeah, 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 because we want the most recent... That's probably what I was thinking. That was probably my rationale. There we go. We want the most recent player character, combat character, because he could level up between then. So, that makes sense. Okay, I take it back. Ignore what I'm saying. All right. <laughs> So, once we have the combat initialized with the newest version of the player character, we can now load combat. This load combat is actually the visuals for the combat. This is loading the combat on screen. So, we set game.combat as combat. We initialize the combat box. We set up our listeners for the combat. And then we get rid of the hidden on the pop-up, listen for the animation to finish, and uh, start showing the pop-up. So at this point, when we add shown to the class list, the animation will start. And once the animation ends, then we can actually start combat. Uh, anything to explain here? I don't really think so. This is pretty straightforward. Uh, we went over initialized combat box in a previous episode. The finished combat is very obviously, you know, what happens when the fight is over. Well, here, we can look at that really quick. Uh, finish combat. Where are we at? There we go. So, if combat is over and the victor is not player, then it's a game over. And regardless, or not regardless, but otherwise, we can go ahead and shrink the combat. What you call it? We should, what we'll eventually do is add the inventory screen in here. And then do additional combat. Or do an additional callback, rather. To shrink both the combat box and the inventory box because in a dark room the inventory box overlays the combat box when you go to pick up your stuff as i recall it at any rate so that will change in the future but for right now we will just minimize the combat box right off the bat so that is that callback this callback is very self-explanatory when the player enemy's current hp changes we change it on the screen uh, here is that function callback somewhere. F12. There it is. So we check which character it is, get the correct box for the character, and update current HP text. Easy peasy. And do, 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 there we are. And then again, I already explained this stuff right here. So at the once the box is completely on screen start combat there it is so at this point the animation will be done the pop-up will be fully displayed we can stop listening for the pop-up to fully display and we can call combat loop so that the guys start fighting and that let's see let's see if we have any other changes i already did game over for you guys Okay, the uh, rest of the changes for today are simply cleanup. So, down here in Finish Demo, we had to add some stuff because we now have combat to clean up. So, doo -doo -doo, let me just check that there's not anything else that I didn't realize I'm missing. No, this should be it. Okay. The interesting thing is that I'm looking at my diff 
and the diff is actually saying that I deleted this line and added this line back in. Which is funny. I don't exactly know why it's saying that. So this line was in before. It is still in. I don't... Oh, you know what? Maybe it's this white space at the end. Maybe that's what it's saying. It's probably saying the white space at the end there. Uh, regardless, document.query selectors get the combat buttons. And for each of the buttons in combat, disable them. So that would be any weapons or items you're using. Make sure you cannot click those. Remove all listeners from the player, I believe was already on there. Yes, it does say everything was on there. Uh, that was already here. And then if we have game.combat, if a combat is currently here, stop listening for the combat, stop listening for each of the characters in the combat, and just to make sure everything is kosher, set the victor to game.combat.enemy. As opposed to us. We don't want to win. And then once that is done, we can go ahead and clear game.combat. And that is the total of our changes. That is everything. So, very, very happy that we have gotten this far today. Would have been nice to have the buttons hooked up as well so we could actually hack the guy in half. But, frankly, it's one of those things. Uh, I did spend a bit of time on CSS. Maybe if I didn't spend as much time on CSS, we might have had that working. Or, alternatively, I could have had that half done and then we wouldn't have been able to do the combat demo. Or the, well, the combat in the map demo. Show you that on stream. So... That is the deal with that. That is everything that's gotten done and look forward hopefully next time to being able to actually defeat the enemy. And as soon as we can defeat the enemy, then we can collect our uh, rewards from the... Actually, we're going to need a rewards pop-up. That's right. So I said that the inventory pop-up pops up after combat, but that is inaccurate. The rewards pop-up is actually the thing that pops up after combat. So, um, okay, actually, maybe this is what I'm getting confused. I'm thinking back to a dark room, and I think there is only the rewards. Yeah, okay, I think there's only the rewards window. I think that in order to access your items, you actually have to stop at a house and that's the only way you can get to your inventory to, for example, heal and whatnot. I believe that's how it worked. So actually, this inventory window I'm talking about will have to rename to reward window. And then when you get to a house, we'll pop up the reward window just without any rewards if you've already... Or actually, no. That's right. Uh, in a dark room, you could not revisit houses after you've already collected your stores from them. So each time you visit an already explored port, our version of port, their version house, uh, it would pop up with a reward window that would give you a store of goods cached there. And then you could use healing items and whatever, get your stored goods, and then you could not return to that house on that map track, uh, track that map, uh, whatever you want to call it, excursion. You would have to go back to the colony and then go back out to regain cash, uh, cashed items. So yeah, that's what it is. So we will change inventory to rewards. And then when you visit the already explored port, we'll just pop that up. And that is the same pop up, like I said, as the post combat rewards. All right, so yeah, that is the plan. That is the plan. We'll get those two working. And then after that, we need to implement cities or dungeons. We could do either. A city and a dungeon, there's not really much of a difference in. So actually, come to think of it, they're probably the same exact structure. They're both sequence events. And one just has constant combat or 90% combat, let's say, because I do believe you get the occasional chance to uncover loot as one of your actions in a dungeon. And whereas the city is a mixture, more of a mixture of text events, 
like text events, choice events, and combats. Yeah. So they should actually be one and the same. So we can set up the quote unquote dungeon and quote unquote city at the same time. Okay. Yep. Yeah, that is the plan going forward. So a little bit of a longer recap today. Normally shoot for 30 minutes. That was 40 minutes there. Uh, but we did spend a bit of time playing around with the demo, so that's part of the time it took, and therefore it's understandable. I don't think I was speaking particularly slow today, so uh, yeah, that should be everything. Uh, next session is the big 2-0. That would be nominally 40 hours worth of work. The Again, I talked originally that... Okay, let's budget, for example, 80 hours worth of work to get this off the ground to get it to a playable state. Well, this will be the halfway point. Again, give or take, because obviously some of my set, some of my sessions like today did run a few minutes late. But nominally, this will be the 40-hour mark, one full work week worth of work into this project at the end of next session. And it will be very interesting to see where that lands us. I would have liked to have the map demo completely done by the end of the 20th section. That way we can focus from then on out on just the game itself and making sure that's all running. However, the one nice thing here is that the way I've been structuring these demos more or less guarantees that we can more or less copy paste stuff. For example, this whole entire uh, let's see. Yeah, no, it is this one. This whole entire built stat block thing and initialized combat, frankly, probably will be able to copy and paste directly into the game itself. So we are getting 90%, uh, not 90%. We are getting a lot of our work out of the way right now doing these demos. So it is not going to take as long as you might suspect once we get done doing demos and move on to actual game development to have this series polished off and this game complete so anyway thank you guys for sticking around thank you for watching if you have been and i hope you have a great and wonderful day afternoon or evening wherever you are in the world and i will catch you next time